welcome to the Romania River channel in my preview slash first impressions of Torment, Tides of Numenera, a game by Inexile Entertainment, which is for me at least and probably a lot of other people, a radical departure from the standard Dragon Age-esque or Diablo-esque type RPGs to be honest. In fact, this is an RPG in probably the more literal sense of the word, because in my playthrough, which at the current time sits around 10 to 11 hours, I've only fought twice, and I've resolved conflicts or situations which could escalate into a conflict many more times, either via persuasion or other less um, direct means, to be honest. Now, speaking of the game as it currently is in Early Access, the game itself, the storyline, is not completely in. There are certain segments of the current chapter which is in, which are missing, but what is in is Jesus Christ, it's completely... Well, to be honest, I'd heard tales of Planescape Torment and how deep it would be, but for me personally, Planescape never looked that appealing visually. And while I'm not usually a graphics whore, when something looks like it was drawn with pencil and animated by hand, by a five-year-old, it kind of detracts from the experience for me. This game is sufficiently beautiful in and of itself for me to actually be able to enjoy it. And once I actually got through the relatively deep shock of actually bumping into a game made by the original creators of Planescape Torment, which lived up to my expectations and my imagination in terms of what Planescape Torment was or what it played like, because, to be honest, I heard a lot of stories. I heard stories like, for example, in Planescape you could actually talk somebody out of existence. Not so much kill them, but talk them out of freaking existing. And in this game, you do get certain situations I've encountered within the first five hours, which, while you aren't exactly talking somebody out of existing, like, say, for example, Darth Sion-esque Knights of the Old Republic shit, but you still alter the past in, <laughs> in ways you would not even freaking believe. There are uh, things in the game which are deeply weird. I mean, you're like, okay, I want to help this guy with this trauma, with this guilt. You help him. And then you realize this guy is a time traveler, he can tra travel back in time and change whatever he fucked up. Okay. What did he fuck up? An entire civilization. Mm. And what did he do now? Well, apparently the history now is that that civilization turned into something akin to Nazi Germany. Fuck. Oops. But before we get too far ahead of ourselves with the insane storyline and mentioning stuff which is basically Lovecraftian like words which can drive civilization to ruin actual just words just hearing the word like for example Cthulhu <sighs> those are some weird shit <laughs> but now speaking of the game in its current form the options are bare bones. The conversation, you just get some text stuff, which is quite important if you don't... if you don't particularly like changing glasses five to six times before you actually finish the game. And considering I spent 11 hours on probably what would take most people three hours by just, you know, speed running through, you can imagine. <laughs> I spent actually about 8 hours in one day playing the game because I was like, eh, I'll play a bit. I'll play a bit more. Oh, my stomach's grumbling. What time is it? 
2 a.m. I was supposed to eat six hours ago. Fuck! Anyway, so yeah, these are quite useful options. The game options, the selection circles, I have. Actually, those are more for objects and stuff like that. Highlight objects itself is useful if you need um, to find interactable objects, lootable containers, or stuff like that. The default um, trigger button to um, see on the current screen what's lootable, what's interactable, either just you know getting a bit of information or actually doing something with the object is tab. By holding tab down you see what objects there are. Containers usually appear as um, pulsating spaces basically and that is very useful to know because to be honest the game itself you do not have any means of acquiring items in the traditional sense. Mostly acquire items in one-off sense via interactions with NPCs, not via merchants. There are merchants in the game, but if, if, to be honest, in a rather gamesian contrivanced way, none of them sell shit to you. Gun merchant, nope. Sword merchant, nope. Armor merchant, we don't have anything, everything's custom made. Bloody Christ. Dude, I'll skin myself, you can make my, make an armor out of my own skin. Will you do that? No? Okay. And yes, you could probably actually do that eventually in the game, if you get pissed off enough. <laughs> now, the graphics is where the game, for me, does not do enough. At all. It's... I hope by the end of the early access they add in more options for more bling or less bling depending on the type of system you run. Because my Xeon E3 1231V3 and the AMD Radeon R9 next to it, 290, without V-Sync on, well, the optimization is such that, for example, in the intro screen slash cinematic slash dialogue option the game would actually run the GPU as hard as it bloody could without vsync with vsync on it forces the game like the vsync option should to pretty much try and hold the FPS for the refresh rate my refresh rate being 60 Hz, which is quite optimal considering the game otherwise would have been like, oh, I have so much play room to play with. Let's see, see if we can hit 300 FPS per second. What? And by the way, yes, I said frames per second, second. I like acceleration. Oh well. Anyway, let's see. Besides this whole issue with the V-Sync, which in most games you wouldn't like because it caused different types of issues, in this game you want it on. The resolution itself, uh, for some inane reason, keeps defaulting to 1024 by 768 at 60Hz. I kept pu putting it to this, but it doesn't usually stick to this for some reason. The game's in early access. It has so much to offer, and it does quite a bad job at offering some of the things you'd want to have. Now the camera itself, you have hybrid mode which you can toggle if I'm not mistaken following or you can not. The follow mode itself is more if you're into always having your character in the center of the screen. Personally I'm used to either way. I use hybrid mode because it just gives me the option. Sound pretty standard. The music itself is serviceable, not that I've much notice it. And to be honest, it's good, but not my kettle of fish. Too dramatic at certain points. Now, we could go via the start, or we could go via loading, on the, a save to actually just show combat and a bit of the NPC interactions because that would be the simplest way of doing things and if we go via the start it would spoil quite a bit of the intro and I highly suspect that some of that stuff may be really plot crucial later on 
in ways I'm not yet aware of. Having played only 11 hours and I'm quite sure this game by the end would probably play if you do everything imaginable around well 100 to 200 hours easy because you get sidetracked with crazy words with mutants with AIs trying to reproduce and stuff like that quite often and I am doing my best not to spoil anything oh dear god okay we're gonna go via the load <laughs> less options to spoil shit Oh yeah, this will probably be the shortest preview slash first impressions because I literally cannot show too much without spoiling a lot. Of course the game, I probably broke it quite severely by spamming saves like any person who does not want to... Come on. Okay, now this way it goes, because I didn't want to miss too many options, but how should I put this? There are so many choices, oh, damn it, it's glitched, one sec, and we're back, and we fixed it, mostly. Now, speaking, where were we, to be honest, oh yeah. I was about to load a save, all of the many I have. I really did not kid when I said I spammed saves a bit too much. I'm relatively sure that's what broke the game that badly. But anyway, to get your best, um, the best experience from the game, at least in terms of roleplay potential, I'd suggest keeping about 6 saves. Maybe 10 at most. Don't be a safe spam whore like I am. Because <laughs> apparently this game does not take too well to that. Anyway, this is about half an hour to an hour into the game if you speed run through. Right outside the intro part. Basic gist of it is for some reason you crashed in, for some reason you spent quite a bit unconscious, these guys found you. They, these guys did not proceed to sell you for bits, which is quite often the case in this world. This world being quite weird, like the game. But anyway, yes, you can interact with those, you can interact with that. Well, let's actually show just how much you can interact with here. That gives you a bit of information that's interactable. That's also interactable, and I believe you cannot obtain an item from that if you are lucky enough to actually do it. I did not have that luck with my session. Mm. Now we're going towards the place where we would get the first boss. Well, not boss, first combat situation. Now these guys are basically, okay, something crashed into that dome back there, let's go see what it is. Because rare items are rare and important, basically. I'm just gonna skip through this, so we don't spoil too much and get to the combat. Now from a perfectly ideal situation, we would kill this guy last if at all possible. Because that, guy de that guy's death will cause a explosive situation. This guy being, well, I think it's a guy. Really hard to tell with the models. But then again in this world it could be a guy and a girl at the same time good hit uh, 
the combat system you have three pools be might which is melee uh, speed which is more for the rogues and intellect which is basically your more for persuasion stuff or even spells if I'm not mistaken but I've not really dicked around with spells much in the game and more of a fist to face type individual now you get there so he can protect you wow a critical zero hit Oh, you enraged. So bad for you. Come on. And that's one down. There's a third somewhere around here, which is the... She's there. Hmm. Well, the game kind of fucked itself. Nuke this guy severely. Nice tattoos, bro. Okay, this guy's going for a Cali stage. God, these names are hard. Bro, oh, fuck. And if the pools, if I'm not mistaken, all three fall to zero, you're knocked out, basically. Hmm. I don't think my tidal surge would hurt my friends here, so... Where was that? Yeah, I think... Well, actually, that's Kerastasia, yeah. Okay, so who do we shoot her? Full power? Yes, spectacular 3 damage. But the game is... Nothing if not rewarding. Because for some reason, I've not yet figured out, enemies also go down in difficulty with the number of turns. Oh dear god, they flanked me. You need to go down. Thank you. Surge it. Well, that didn't do what I was expecting it to. And that did not happen the first time. Wow, that's an interesting event. Oh boy, that, that hit hard. And I did not get this either. Wow. I just nuked them completely the first time I went through here. And that's our basic combat abilities. These two argue for some inane reason. We do not pick sides.
before we go anywhere, let's loot the field. Slowly and glitchfully, but yeah. Okay, that's us pretty much alone. And here we will leave this bit off. And as you can tell, the game already supplied us with quite a weird resolution to this battle. I did not expect that rogue to leg it. Not attention to detail, bro. Anyway, let's head in the game options and head towards a more interesting uh, conflict resolution via conversation. Which occurs quite a bit later, about eight hours later. If I'm not mistaken, this should be the good one. This game is quite insane, and basically, for somebody like me who likes Warhammer 40k. This game kind of turns that up to 11, because, well, I'm not gonna say this future is grim dark, but there's been at least, by what I can tell, 7 to 8 different eras with different civilizations, which went completely kaput. And to be honest, it's gotten so crazy on the planet itself that what you're stepping on <clears throat> in terms of soil is not really soil. It's fragmented masonry, machinery, and stuff like that. So you get the distinct feeling, fuck, this... This is taking Grim Dark to the Entropic maximum, to be honest. Like... Battlestar Galactica, all this has happened before and all this will happen again stuff. And the uh, stories you bump into kind of actually lend that way. And of course what you are especially also leads that way. But let's get on with showing a slight conflict resolution here. Now, we have to ask these guys to dig somewhere else because they are digging underneath the city and because of their nature, which is a sentient, sapient bug species that feeds off electricity and which needs to dig to actually get that electricity because for some reason their claws spark with the stone. I wouldn't be surprised if the stone itself is actually compacted machinery from God knows how many civilizations before this one, but whatever. And the fact that they're digging, and they're digging mostly around areas where people are building on the edge of a cliff, well, you can imagine what happens. Yes, there are a couple of storylines you also deal with, with people from that area. Heck, there's even a chick with flying, well, not flying, floating... I think it's mice, but it could be also hamsters. That you could help by basically buying one of her remaining hamsters. But she's basically... The hamsters are basically what's left of her family, but what I get the feeling of. But anyway. Oh yeah, the offering the power source change stuff. Okay. And by the way, my um, character class is a jack, which is basically a um, jack of all trades. 
technically speaking, the term jack doesn't come from jack of all trades, though I'll let you guys discover what actually comes from. If you didn't promise them the power source, well, power sources, she would have been would have mentioned you in the report. But these guys would starve, and they're not bad. And I think I trust these bugs more than I trust the um, humans. Come on, come on, come on! Yes. That um, particular bug was one that was heading out near a collapsed building. It was being fed by a couple of children. And it, to be honest, you kind of take pity on them and you never know what benefits it will have later on. Because God knows, you might actually wake up with a um, armored bug as a companion later on. We need to go here to be able to basically get the information required to get other information we need to find someone remarkably like us. Oh dear god, being this vague is painful. Oh yeah, and character progression itself, you do have levels, but... Come on, pop up. Really shouldn't save that often. <laughs> Come on. Good boy. Now you have basically tiers, and each tier has steps. Each step gives you the ability to choose a specific enhancement to your current character and of course you also get other stuff but again spoilers so yeah <clears throat> but basically you get the amount of required experience and you can advance a step eventually you get to tier 2 and you repeat the process so basically if you hear it has only 20 tiers you're like oh my god it only has what 20 levels. Oh no, it has 80. And that's assuming it still has 4 steps in the next one. What if it has 5? Anyway, we've been here. We're not going to interact too much with stuff around here because, again, spoilers. Notice a distinct absence of something? Yep. The bugs are, have left. Let's actually check. For stuff. Oh shit. Come on. Stop, stop mucking about. Yeah, I knew that was loot. Tractile bug? The oh oh yeah and ciphers which are basically single shot usable abilities of a sort linked to items like explosives quickening or other type of attributes or explosive or corrosive or poisonous or basically damage 
if you have too many of them in your inventory of any particular character, including your protagonist, you get cipher sickness. The more you have, the higher the cipher sickness goes. And it can affect your character quite severely, so you have to balance out how many ciphers you have. Now let us go to the LOD. And now we have the information required to go find one of the people that has basically the same attributes as me, though it's a she, and quite a few centuries older if I'm not mistaken. But we're going to have to leave it here because that's again a major ass spoiler. Plus it actually shows one of the rather unique ways you can interact with history going backwards and altering it quite fundamentally to be honest this game is nothing if not well to be honest i'm pretty sure you can actually get to a point where you're not actually crashing into the dome at the start you change history sufficiently to do that. God knows if the main antagonist, which is a entity called the Sorrow, is a temporal. Because if it is a temporal, you killing it now would actually kill it all over time. And I wouldn't be surprised about that particularly. But anyway, we're gonna leave it off here. Now that we show you guys combat, which is functional and to be honest the fact that it's turn based makes it quite entertaining for me it works if it was real time it would have been a pain in the ass to deal with but oh well and the conflict re resolution you can have e via dialogue options because you could have also stormed the bugs nest killed everything that moved steal the eggs and basically have a way to negotiate them out of the city. I do believe the mapper, that's his actual name, not his um, job, actually has a way to resolve even that conflict by a different means completely, but I don't know exactly how to use that option. Because he tells you of a specific place where the bugs could go, which is more nutritious for them and there's nobody to collapse buildings due to their digging. But I am. This pretty much is the game. And for an early access game, well, to be honest, if they were to work quite a bit more on their optimization, possibly add in a guide somewhere or a quick tip or a link basically keep vsync on don't save so much etc etc it would be a perfectly functional early access game that actually has more story than most of the early access games ha have when they are, the, they are out of early access the thing is though the game at the current moment is about 45 euros in Europe, in my area basically. So it is, I assume, close to if not at launch price, considering most uh, AA games, the developers make no assertion that this game is a AAA title, are about that price too. So yeah. For a game of this type, which you rarely see, the only other game of this uh, type and one of their successors I can name, well, the first one being, um, what was it called, Pillars of Eternity, and the other one being a sort of successor to the genre in terms of classic RPGs, namely Divinity Original Sin. 
besides those two in this one I can't think of other games which are in this genre which are this good looking at least and this well off in story to be honest I mean that first fight actually surprised me by its resolution I did not expect the dude to um, go that way because in the first the first time I went with the bow, I took out the swordsman and the, the crossbowman first. I concentrated on the other two last. So basically if you leave the crossbowman and the assassin last, you get that resolution. Quite interesting. I wonder what selecting the option of uh, I'll go with you would give you. Quite a game. Quite a game. But considering its issues with optimization currently I would recommend looking up um, this game on YouTube for let's plays or even gameplay videos if you don't want to get spoiled too much or looking up games like uh, Pillars of Eternity or even Planescape Torment I'm not sure there are many let's plays of that around but there should be to get an idea how this game plays and if you like what you see there you like what you read online from previews or from reviews of older games or even like what you saw in this video 45 euros for what could probably be a hundred hour 200 hour god knows how many hundreds of hours games game pardon is quite little I mean where else can you get what 4.5 euro cents per hour of enjoyment just be careful about the eclectic nature of the universe itself it's not for everybody it's the weirdest mix of steampunk sci-fi and slightly medieval to be honest um, inspirations and uh, general themes I've seen in quite a while but yeah thank you for watching ladies and gentlemen and until next time BAFTA